Do you want to know how the quicksort algorithm works and even program it and visualize it in Python? If so, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel and let's stop talking and start coding. Let's start by introducing you to a simple quicksort example with just a simple list and no code at all. So the first thing we want to do is get to know a couple of words that we're going to use throughout the tutorial. And that is going to be the pivot point, the border and our current pointer. So the current pointer is just going to point to the current element that we're going to compare with something. The border value, I'm going to explain that once we start using it. And the pivot point is just going to be a value that we are going to compare the current value to. So the first and most important thing is selecting a good pivot point. There's various algorithms to do that. You can make some kind of first and middle point and the last point and select the median of it. I'm just going to use the last element. So I'm just going to select 12 like this. And then I want to grab the border and set it on the first element. And I want also want to set the pointer on the first element right here. And the border value just means that everything on the left of the border is going to be smaller than the pivot point, not including the border. That is very important. And then we just want to ask, is three going to be less than the pivot point, which is 12? And if that is true, I want to swap three and the current border value, which is just going to be three as well. And then I want to increase the pointer to the next element and the border to the next element. And again, I'm going to ask, is eight less than 12? And if that is true, we are going to swap eight with eight again, which does not make sense, and then increase the border value and also increase the pointer. And as you can see on the left side of the border, there are always elements that are going to be smaller than the pivot point. And the next step I want to do is ask if 15 is less than 12. And since that is not true, I'm just going to select the pointer and leave the border where it is and move the pointer to the right by one. Let's continue on by comparing 39 to the pivot point. 39 is not greater than 12. So let's just move the pointer and leave the border where it is. Let's try to compare 45 now and 45 is not greater than 12. So let's just move the pointer along by one again. Now we want to ask if seven is less than 12 and that is true, which means that we want to swap these two values. So I want to swap 15, which is the border value with the seven. And then I want to move the border to the right by one because we did swap something. And then I want to move the pointer along by one. And once we reach the pivot point, we do not want to compare it with the pivot point. That would not make any sense. This is going to be the last step. We want to swap the pivot point and the border value like this. So this was one iteration of quicksort. And as you can see, the border value, the current border value on the left side of the border value are all elements are smaller than the border value, which is 12. And on the right side are going to be elements that are greater than 12, which is basically the definition of a list. If you take any given element in a sorted list, on the left side of the element are going to be just elements that are smaller than itself. And on the right side are going to be elements that are going to be greater than itself. Once we finish the first step by sorting it, we're going to do the same thing on the left partition and the right partition. And we're not going to bother with the border anymore. So let's just deselect that, which means that the next step is just going to be do, to do quick sort on the left part and the right part and over and over again until we run out of elements to sort. And um, this is going to be a recursive algorithm that is going to call itself on its sub partitions, which is a great advantage on really large lists, because once you finish up the first iteration and divide it into two sub lists, you can then actually sort those lists independently on multiple threads. So if I would now sort the left part, so three, seven and eight, and then the right part independently of itself, which is just going to be very fast. If you use multiple threads, then you can see that we have a sorted list, even though the, these two lists were sorted separately of each other. With that all said, we are finally going to jump into the coding part of this tutorial. Let's start by creating a new file and let's call this quicksort.py. The first function that we want to create is just going to be quicksort, which is going to take in data, a head, a tail, a function to draw the data just as we had with bubble sort and then a time tick variable. The first thing you want to do is get a partition index. So partition index is going to be equal to a partition function, which we do not have yet. And this function is basically just going to sort the given partition that we pass into it and return us the index of the basically border that we finished at. And we are just going to create a new function. Let's call this partition. And this is going to take in the data array, a head, a tail, and then a function again, draw data, and then time tick as well. 
This function is just going to set up a border, which is going to be equal to the head index and then a pivot point, which, which is just going to be the last value in our data array, basically for the first iteration and then just the last value in the array on the tail index. What we are doing is just setting up the border, which is the left part right here, and then the pivot point, which is going to be the last element of our current list. And once that, once that is done, we want to loop for every single element in range from head to tail. We do not want to include the tail index, that is why we are just looping through the tail. And then we want to check if the data on the J index is less than the pivot, just as we did in the algorithm walkthrough. And if the data on the J index is less than the current pivot point, then we want to swap the border value with the J index, just as we did before. And then we want to increase the border value, so border plus equals so 1. And if that is not true, we still want to increase the J index, which is just going to be done by the for loop. That is quite all right. Once we finish looping and swapping all the elements, we still need to swap the border value with the tail value, which is just the last that, that we did in the walkthrough. So let's just do that right here. And then we want to return the border value, which is just going to be the middle index which means that right here, the partition index is going to be equal to the partition function. And we want to pass in the data, the head for the first iteration, then the tail and draw data and also the time tick, just everything that we did. And now we are going to get a partition index. And once we get a partition index, we can recursively call quicksort and we want to pass in data, head and tail, draw data and time tick. Once we finished sorting, we divided the sections into the left partition and the right partition, which means that for the first partition, the head is always going to be the head, but the tail is going to change and it's going to change to the partition index minus one because we do not want to include the border value that we have right here. So for example, the 12 got swapped into the border position and then we want to sort the left side of the list, which is just going to be the partition minus one. And then for the right partition, we want to keep the tail, which is the last element, and we want to index it from the partition index plus one. Since we are using recursion, we have to be very careful and we want to have some kind of condition when to stop. And the condition is just going to be when the head is less than the tail, we want to actually call this function and else we just want to return. So be sure you indent it correctly in Python. Once we finish writing up the function, we can simply test it by creating a new random data array. So let's just put in some elements that are not going to be sorted like that, that's quite all right, one, two, three. And then we want to call quick sort and with the data as the data array, head is going to be zero, the tail is going to be length of data and be sure to pass in minus one because we want the length in indices. So that is why we have to pass in minus one and the draw data function is just going to be zero and zero for the time tick because we are not really using it. And then we just want to print out the sorted data. Now we can start the file by just typing in Python 3 and quick sort. And as you can see, we get a sorted array out of this unsorted array. And we can also change up the elements like that and we should still get a sorted array in here. Awesome. Let's delete the testing stuff and let's start working on in the implementation with our sorting algorithms. Draw data file function does need a color array according to the length of the data array. To be able to do that, we will want to define a new function. Let's call this get color array because this is going to be a little bit more complicated than bubble sort. This function is going to take in a parameter data length, a head, a tail, just as we had for visualizing. Then we want to visualize the border and the current index. And let's also put in a property as swapping. And let's set it to false by default so that we do not have to include it in every function call. And we want to create a new color array. Then we want to look for i in range of the data length. So data length that we have passed in. And we want to start with a base coloring. So if i is greater or equal to the head and i is less or equal to the tail, we have to check for both. Then we want the color array dot append and we want to append a, a gray color. This is going to be the color in which we are going to visualize the current elements that we are using. Now else we want to visualize it as white. And I forgot the I in range of data length, of course. So gray is going to be the partition that we're currently working on and white is going to be the partition that we are not working with. Then we want to overwrite the current setup color. If the I is going to be equal to the tail, then we want to set the color array on the i index to blue. And yes, you could of course 
do a more complicated if and else statement, but I'm just going to append it like this and then change the I index to blue or something else because I do not worry about performance and else if I is going to be equal to the border, then we want to visualize the index of the color array on the I index to red, just as we had at the algorithm walkthrough and then else if the i is equal to the current index, then we want to set up the color array on the i index to something like yellow. And the last important thing is that if we are swapping, we want to overwrite the color array again. And we want to overwrite it only if the i is equal to the border, because we are swapping the border, or i is equal to the current index. Then we want to swap the color on the i index to something like green. So let's walk through it. So we set up some kind of base color and append an element to the color array. And then we override it by a given color if we want to actually highlight it. The last thing, if we are swapping, which is this parameter right here, then we want to check if the i is equal to the border index or the current index and set it to green. And yes, like I said again, you could have the if and else of the swapping right here and just make it a little bit different, but I'm just going to do it like this and feel free to change it up just as you would like. And the last thing you have to actually do, we want to return the color array and let's now implement it. Let's hop over to the partition function and let's implement the visualization of our function. And we want to call the draw data function. So draw data just as we did. And we want to pass in the data and then a color array, which is just going to be the get color array. This takes in the data length and then the head the tail that we have in the partition and the border is just going to be equal to the border and the current index is going to be equal to the border. And then we also want to sleep, so time.sleep and we have to import time to do that. So just go up here and import time. Now we can call the time.sleep function and we want to sleep for the time tick. And let's copy these two lines. And right here where we swap these two elements, we want to call this function before we swap them so that we can see which two elements are going to be swapped and we want to swap the border and the J is the current index and we want to set the is swap to true. Let's copy these two lines again and let's also visualize it after every single step in the loop. So let's go in here and the draw data and we want to set this to false. So just not put in anything. And yes, we want to visualize the current index and the border so that we see how it's looping. And right here where we swap the pivot point with the border, we could also visualize it, I think. So let's copy these two lines again. And right before we swap the border with the current value, we want to actually visualize it. And we want to put in detail that it's going to be the current index, you could say. And then we want to put in true that we are swapping. Let's now also call this function from the sorting algorithms.py. And we want to find the start algorithm function. And this is going to be a little bit more complicated right now. So if not data, we want to check if the data array is empty. And if it is empty, we want to just return out of it. And then we want to check if the algorithm menu dot get is going to be equal to the quick sort. So quick sort. And to be sure it's written the same exact way. Let's just copy the whole string right here and go down here to the frame layout where we have the algorithm menu and the combo box. And we just want to paste in the quick sort right here as the next element. And if you want to call the quick sort, we have to import it. So just like bubble sort from quick sort, import and quick sort. Now we can copy the function name and call it down here if when we want to call it. And we want to call it on the data array. And we want to call it with the head at zero and the tail at the length of data minus one. It's very important. And we want to pass in the draw data function and speed scale dot get and like that. Awesome. And once we finish this algorithm, we want to draw the data as a green array. So data and, and then we want to pass in green for every single element. So for X in a range of length of data. And we also want to have a LF and let's copy this line at the top. And we want to check for bubble sort. If that is true, then we want to call the bubble sort function like this. Awesome. And before we start it up, I have one little mistake. This bracket has to be right here. Once you start it up, select quick sort, generate a array that you like. And we are going to sort this array. So the border was red right here and we are swapping it. And then we have a sorted array. If this was too fast or unclear, you could also play around with the get colors array and visualize it in a different way. Or you could just put in a bigger value with the speed scale. Let's put it to something like 5.0 seconds. And if I restart the app, I can select 5.0 seconds right here on the speed scale and also hit quick sort. And 
Now it's going to take way longer to actually sort. Let's select a decent array. And if I hit the start button, I now have five seconds to look at this array. So this on the left is the border, on the right is the pivot point, and then the pointer is going to walk from left to right. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial part. If you are still not sure what Quicksort does, be sure to rewatch this tutorial series and even scale down the speed scale right here so you know exactly what's going on. We are going to take apart another sorting algorithm in the next part and until then stay tuned, subscribe to the channel and let me know what I should do different in the next parts and I will see you then. Bye!